and the trained outcome. So it's a supervised learning model. So I train the model and what I get in regard is this B. These are the coefficients that define my logistic regression model. So that's what I've learned. So through this fitting, I, go, I have these measurements. So you could see the same thing that we were doing. So you can say, okay, there's a high dimensional space of R4. So these are your measurement. And here you have your Y. So, but, but again, it's a 2D, but think about that this is a surface. It's a surface, you have R4, and each one of this is a point. Each one of this is a point. And you're trying to find the best classifier that actually, or sorry, the best uh, uh, model that actually fits this data. That's what I'm trying to do. And I've used logistic regression. So for that, I get this B matrix. Now what I'm trying to do, now I have this novel data set. It is saying that these are the sepal dimensions and these are the petal dimensions. Based on these dimensions, tell me which species does the sample belong to. That's what I want to do. So I had a training data, a fully annotated training data. I trained a logistic classifier. And now I'm, I have this new measurement, novel data, and I want to infer what my output is. And when I look at that, I just do, I just valid or I just evaluate that logistic regression function on this novel data. And what I get in regard at the end is basically these probabilities. It's a probabilistic estimate. So it is saying it belongs to set, uh, class one is zero. It belongs to class two, it's close to 0.4. It belongs to class 3, it is 0.6. The sum of the probabilities is 1. So I've transformed my classification problem into a regression problem. I used a logistic regression as a classifier. I trained a model on my data set. And with a new novel data set, I can get probabilistic estimates. And that's very important. So now I can't say, so this is not crisp logic, the 0 or 1. It's a fuzzy kind of a thing. It's a probabilistic estimate. It is telling me with a certain probability that I believe that by 60% chance, it is species 3. By 40% chance, this is species, four, uh, species 2. So that's a very, very simple example. And you could use any regression function. You could do this by classification also. But here we transform the outcomes, which were like, uh, 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 which were like categories. And we transform them into nominal variables like 1, 2, 3, or something like that. That's what we're at. So it's a very, very simple example on how we can do logistic regression. So very quickly, I know that uh, the time is uh, running out. So, okay. <laughs> so now, so we have, so, um, so this is all about supervised learning. So we looked at two tasks, training, oh, sorry, uh, regression and classification. And we said that we always have fully annotated data with us. That's the best thing. We want to use it. And we have three things that we have to look for. Data, what is the classifier that I'm interested in? What is my loss function? So that, that's what we have here. Now, in the unsupervised training case, we don't have any annotations. The examples, observations are unlabeled. There are no assigned outcomes. There is no ground truth. There is no uh, gold standard. They are just observations. And I want to learn a model. But I can't do much about it. But even though we have a data, it's not a do or die situation. Still, we can do a lot. I can try to infer relationships between my data elements. Like, for example, I don't know, like, we are, we are looking at all, I think if we, are, if we have 100 people here, let's see who is the best badminton player here. I want to train a model to predict if a new person will come, he's a good badminton player or not. But I don't know about you. But I can say, okay, but I can start to collect some information that that guy is a six-footer. So he can have a better reach. So I can start, and that person is like, for example, that person is quite uh, uh, fit and quite lean, so he will be a good athlete. So just based, I can look at my examples, I can look at my observations, and I can start looking at some relationships, some obvious relationships that I have. Then, or I can look at some hidden structures that I, I can use some algorithms that can just bring those uh, hidden structures uh, uh, in the front. I can try to look at some interesting features or some pattern. If there is no pattern, I can't do anything. So whenever we are trying to talk to, about learning, there has to be some pattern. So, so that's the thing. Or I'm trying to do dimensionality reduction. So these are a couple of things that we can do without having uh, annotations. Just by looking at the data, I don't need to be uh, flabbergasted that I don't have a data. Still, there's a lot I can do uh, with this thing. And there's one example that I took from Google Images. So you have input data. You have an unsupervised learning model. And what it does, it sorts these objects into different fruit baskets. It's vegetable, oh yeah, fruits. Apples. I, I don't even know what the name of these fruits are. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. This doesn't look like a mango. We don't have mangoes like this. I've, it has been a long time. So anyway, so just by looking at this collection of objects, I, with, I, don't, I can't learn anything here. 
but I can unravel the hidden structure, relationships, features that, uh, uh, that, are, hidden, uh, that are present in this data set. So that's basically unsupervised learning. And so what we have, the mathematics, you have n IID samples, for example, and there are no YIs. There is no annotations. It's just observations, just examples. The first thing I can do, let's say there's a matrix X, and this matrix X So this matrix has as a hidden structure that it can be factored into two matrices like in a multiplicative fashion or in an additive fashion like low rank plus sparse decomposition that we use in MRI reconstruction or in Netflix problem. So Netflix problem X is an incomplete matrix of ratings, user ratings of movies and we know that this matrix has hidden structure. It is low rank. It is a sum of two matrices. One is low rank, one is sparse. I want to estimate the factors that compose this matrix. That's factor analysis. It could be in product form. It could be in additive form. So I am not learning anything. I'm just trying to bring out, unravel the hidden structure. So there's the problem. So I cast it as an optimization problem, and I'm just minimizing the Frobenius norm here. Again, that's matrix analysis and optimization theory. So I minimize the Frobenius norm, and just using factor analysis, I can discover new things that are present in the data rather than just waiting for annotations to come. The, set, the second thing is principal component analysis. I want to reduce the dimensionality of my data. That's what I want to do. My data is a huge matrix, but I know there's a very good low rank approximation of this matrix. I want to find that uh, approximation. Or the low dimensional subspace that actually make, uh, contains the majority of the information that my original high dimensional matrix is doing. I can again cast it as an optimization problem. So xi is my all data points. And I'm saying it can be split up into an eigenvector and their corresponding uh, eigenvalues or factors that we could, we could do. And we're assuming that this is a, uh, uh, these are eigenvectors of so v transpose v is equal to i. So that's what we're trying to do. So if we have perfect classification, so we know that xi is basically v zi. If I multiply both sides with vi, so, oh, sorry, v, this becomes zi or lambda z or something like that. This is nothing but an eigenvector problem. That's what we are trying to do. So it has eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of this. And what we do, we have an algorithm. We do an SVD of this matrix. The, the diagonal elements are sorted singular values. Let's say you want a rank n approximation. You select the first n singular values and the corresponding singular vectors. So we have a principal component analysis. It is not learning anything. It's just bringing the hidden structure. It's telling me that my high dimensional data set has a very interesting low dimensional representation. K means clustering. I have a set of points, a set of objects. I want to cluster them into different groups. And each group has an associated mean. And what I want to do, I have a cost function. I want to minimize within cluster variance, and I want to maximize intra inter cluster variance. So within intra cluster variance, I minimize that members who are in the same cluster should be similar to each other. So there shouldn't be too much of variability. But members who are in different clusters should be quite different from each other. So I'm minimizing intra-class variance, and I'm maximizing inter-class variance. That's what I'm trying to do. So k-means clustering is another example of unsupervised learning. Another example is basically Gaussian mixture modeling, where you are trying to say that my hidden data is basically nothing but a mixture of Gaussians. And if I know the mean and the covariance matrix, I know everything. That's what we have. Because in a Gaussian distribution, you need to know mean and variance. For a multi-dimensional, for a multi, uh, 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 multi uh, vector uh, Gaussian, you need to have uh, a multi, uh, multi variable vector, you need to have a mean and you have an associated covariance matrix. So that's what, we, uh, that's what we have here. So again, that's an unsupervised learning problem. And then you have numerous others. Independent component analysis, non-negative matrix factorization, SVDs. There are all sorts of different methods, hidden Markov model. They are nothing but examples of unsupervised learning. I don't have annotations, but still, it's not, a dead, it's not a dead end. I can still unravel a lot of interesting structure that is hidden in the data. In advance, yeah. yeah. So K means we don't know K in advance. And also, K, uh, K means is a non-convex problem. So if, if it is dependent on initialization. If you choose a different initialization, you may converge to a different solution. Yeah, so you have to know K in advance. Similarly, in low rank also, in a way, you don't know how far you want to go. Yes, there is no, there, uh, it is not a solved problem. And maybe in very, very extreme cases, it is. But in general, it's not a solved problem. So we don't know yet. We don't know. 
All right. So let's look at a demo of a very simple demo of k-means clustering, which is basically un unsupervised learning uh, in MATLAB. 